Hi there, you're welcome to another episode of Father's Care. It's a joy to have you on the program today. Today we're going to continue, continue our discussion about how to deal with setbacks on your Christian journey. Uh, in our previous episode, you know, we talked about the fact that setbacks are inevitable. They do happen. Persons who are pressing on to know the Lord will, will um, if they were to, you know, talk about their experiences, they'll definitely tell you that at one time or the other, at least one time, if not more, you know, they've encountered some significant setbacks in their journey with the Lord. But the good news is that they also have come through. In our previous episode, we, we used the, the case of the disciples from the scripture to just talk about, you know, how, how the death of our Lord Jesus Christ was such a hit to them and how the Lord did bring them through. And we talked about various things. If, if you've not had a chance to watch that episode, please go ahead and, and, and find it on the SWBN YouTube channel. Um, and watch it. But we ended that episode just beginning to talk about, you know, four steps. We said there are four steps. Uh, we want to discuss four steps to overcoming um, significant setbacks, or maybe let's say the, the impact of such setbacks on a Christian's life. And in the prior episode, we, we talked about the first step. We said the first step is really to review the situation, you know, just take time and just look inward um, uh, look at the situation and ponder and ask yourself the question, um, did I, how did I get here? Did I um, step out on the basis of what God told me or did I step out on my own? Um, maybe it's just something I wanted so much and somehow I made it, you know, I just took steps without necessarily waiting for the Lord to initiate that journey. And we said, if the answer to that question is yes, that's where you missed it. Um, and, and just the, you know, just simple thing to do is to just go back to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I stepped out on my own and, and this is how this has come out. Um, forgive me and take me back to the pathway I need to be walking on. And the Lord is faithful. He's loving. He will do that. He will take you back to his pathway and on his pathway, you will find an abundance of fruitfulness. Okay. So we said that in this particular episode, we're going to talk about three other steps that you need to take in a situation where you actually stepped out as the Lord guided you. You did hear the Lord right and you took steps as you felt that he guided you and um, you still hit a setback. So, um, so three steps. So the first step to recover from such a situation is to hold onto your trust in God. Hold on to your trust in God. I did not say faith, <clears throat> because if I say faith, you might say, ah, it's very difficult to have faith right now. So that's why I said your trust in God. Just trust in God as a person. Hold on to that. You know, um, you know, the reality is that nothing can truncate the fulfillment of the promises that God has in store for you. Actually, the only thing that can truncate it is yourself. <clears throat> nothing else, nothing external can truncate the fulfillment of, of, of God's promises for you, um, the accomplishment of what he has in store for you. And let's read that from scripture. Romans chapter 8 tells us that. Romans 8, 35 to 39. <clears throat> Romans 8, 35 <clears throat> to, th excuse me. Romans 8, 35 to 39. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. But one of the things you see here is that this is written by or about the people who are going through challenges, who are facing difficulties, persecution, distresses, or tribulations, you know, and this assurance combines, uh, comes by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to say that none of these things can separate you from the love of Christ and all the love of Christ has in store for you. None of them. And it says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors 
through him that loved us. Hallelujah. So him that loved us enables us to conquer, to overcome in the midst of all these things. As we, when we find ourselves, you know, attacked or, or, or facing situations, any of this, that, that, any of these kinds of situations, anything we can describe as, as tribulation or trouble, distress or persecution, you know, and all these other examples that are given, you know, and not even the, the influences of the adversary, because it, it said, you know, uh, uh, or the attacks of the adversary, you know, not principalities, not powers, none of these things. It says in all of these things, the Lord makes us more than conquerors. He enables us to overcome. None of them, as distressing as they might be, is able to subdue us forever because the Lord helps us to overcome. So that's, that's a, it, it, it's, it's refreshing to think about that in the midst of a setback, in the midst of a difficulty, difficulty. I may not understand what's going on, but there is that assurance and I want to give that assurance to you that whatever it is you're facing is not able to overcome you and separate you from the Lord and what he has in store for you. So because of that, hold onto your trust in him. He is your help. He is your help. So hold on to your trust in him. You know something? The reality is that when the people of God face, you know, some of these difficulties, the, uh, or that, that are a result of, of, of the enemy's attacks, you know, um, the one thing that the adversary is trying to get at is your faith. That is the very thing that he's trying to compromise. Our, our trust in God. At, you know, we trusted God to get to that place. And that's the very thing that he's trying to compromise. He's trying to make God a lie, you know. And, and how do we know that? Well, one of the examples we have from scripture is in the case of Job. So let's go to the book of Job chapter one. Job chapter one. Job is in the Old Testament just before Psalms. Job chapter one. And we're going to read from verses um, six to 13. Okay. It says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. So first and foremost, you know, there is nothing Satan is going to do that catches God by surprise. Before the adversary even percolates that thought, God already knows. And he already has a protection plan for his own a deliverance plan for his own. Okay, so uh, still second part of verse seven, it says, so Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. So the Lord is, is kind of bragging on the work of his hands, right? This is his workmanship. This is his servant. So verse nine, so Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said, said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. So Satan essentially was saying to God, um, he loves you because you're good to him. You know, you've blessed him and all that. I mean, he, that's why he loves you and he puts his trust in you. If the, you take those things away from him, he's going to curse you. He won't trust you anymore. So the Lord said to Satan, okay, let's, let's try it out and see. So for us as well, in, I'm going to say in every, every trial where the adversary is attacking us, that is the very thing. He's trying to bring a wedge between us and God. That was the very first thing he tried to do in the Garden of Eden toward, um, with Adam and Eve, to bring a wedge. And that's exactly what he's trying to do. He's trying to steal all the ruckus that he's creating. There's one thing he wants to steal, our faith in God, our trust in God, our trust in the person of God. And so when you find yourself in a terrible trial, in a, you know, in any trial for that matter, but in a very significant setback, hold onto your faith above everything else that you guard, guard your faith, you know, 
don't let your mind go into the place of, you know, questioning God's person, you know, questioning who God says that he is. Um, you know, take, take the mindset that says, Lord, I may not fully understand. I may not fully understand what has happened. And yes, I am disappointed, but you are God and I will trust in you. Trust in his person, the person of God. You may not understand the situations and the meanderings of the situations, but God is dependable, you know. Um, God is dependable, so ask the Lord. Because when there's a lot of shakings, it just it might be really difficult to hold on to this reality. So one of our prayers in such times is to ask the Lord to help us not lose faith. You know, um, as regardless of what goes on, we just say, Lord, help me not to lose my trust in you. Help me not to lose my trust in your person, my love for you, my faith in you. Help me to hold on to that. Give me light. Give me light. Help me to hold onto my trust in you. You know, in the situation of, of Job, God is, is, his ways are past finding out, you know. In the situation of Job, so Satan went off and like we know, he just did terrible things to Job. But you know what? God used that situation to increase Job. And in your situation as well, I just want to encourage you that if, if you've journeyed with the Lord and you've hit a situation that, a, a setback, um, just be assured that, like I said, nothing can separate you from the promises of God. And on top of that, God will increase you as a result of that situation. God will use that situation to reveal to you dimensions of his person that you're not even aware of. It may be difficult. In your flesh, you may be suffering. It may be a challenging situation, but it's not going to be lost. Hold on to the Lord in faith and the Lord will do marvelous things in you and through you coming out of the situation. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, so, you know, so again, why do you hold on to God? Because God is good and he's our only source of help. You know, if, 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 if Job were to curse God, <laughs> what would have happened? He would have landed in the hand of the enemy. We should have plund who would have plundered him even more? God is our source of help. Let us not run from our source of help. There is something that um, Peter said in this regard. Um, let's go to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 6 verse 68 John chapter 6 verse 68 there's something that Peter said about not running from my help all right so uh, let's read verse from verse 66 it says from that time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ then Jesus said to the 12 do you want to go do you also want to go away but Simon Peter said Lord to whom shall we go you have the words of eternal life. Okay, well, I'll stop there. Um, so Peter got the revelation, right? You are the source of life. You are the source of eternal life. You are my help. So where am I going to run to? No matter what happens, who am I going to run to? So in your situation as well, I want to just encourage you that God is your help. He's your source of help. So don't let anything drive you away from him stay with him even though it's difficult stay with him even though you don't understand and the lord will do marvelous things for you so that's the second step so the third step is of course a question before i talk about the third step the a question that one would ask in that when you're you, you you've believed god you've heard god and you followed him and then things did not work out is what do i do about all that that has happened i mean like how do i explain it to myself how do i Yes, I can hold on to my faith in God, but all of that, God said all those things to me. How do I, how do I explain that? What do I do about that? Okay. So the third step is create what I call a bucket, like a bucket, right? Create a bucket in your world, in your mind, in your spirit realm, and call that bucket the complexities of living a life of faith and of walking with one whose ways are too great for our minds to comprehend and put all that has transpired so far inside that bucket and just leave it there. Okay. So, you know, it's not God, God, God is good, right? God is so great. He's not at our level at all, but he condescends to us and he talks with us as he manages our lives. You know, he, he talks to us, he gives us counsel. He tells us some of what he's going to do and all that, you know, but he doesn't tell us everything. 
because he, he doesn't tell us. There's some things that he just, you know, does not explain to us for different reasons. It's just like when you are, um, um, you know, if you're an adult and you have a child or you're relating to a child, even if you don't have a child and maybe you're relating to a four-year-old or something like that. Let's say somebody that the child knows or that's close to the family passes on. You can't, and, and you're aware of all the intricacies that are involved that led to that person passing on. You can't explain that to a four-year-old. There's no way that child is going to understand. They can't comprehend it. So you will just tell them something simple. Maybe like if that person was a believer or oh, auntie has gone to heaven or that kind of stuff or uncle has gone to, you know, has gone to heaven and you just leave it at that because the child's mind cannot comprehend. And so, so it is in our walk with God, you know, one thing we must not forget, even though the Lord relates to us, comes down to our level, talks with us, you know, <laughs> we must not forget that he is God and we have to respect the fact that he is God. He knows so much more than we do and we can't handle his realm of things in reality. We really cannot handle all that that he knows. You know, after Job had gone through all that trial and it got to time and I mean, he, he really, he, it's, it's re, he really tried. Like there was so much that he went through and God sustained him. Although he began to say, you know, why are you doing this to me, God? And different things. Then at some point toward the end, the Lord began to speak. The Lord didn't say anything for a long time. His friends persecuted him. They didn't understand. They thought he had sinned and that's why he was in the situation and so on and so forth. So toward the end, the Lord began to speak to him. And when God began to speak to him, he began, God began to speak to him at the realm of God. And he began to tell him, you know, can you create the earth? Do you know when, how the foundations of the earth were set? You know, these are the kinds of questions God was asking Job. God was not trying to intimidate Job. He was speaking at his realm. That's the realm in which God operates. We operate in the realm of, oh, will I have food to eat today and all that. God operates in the realm of holding all things together by the word of his power, the word of his counsel. That's, that's, the, that's his realm of operation. You know, he said, uh, uh, um, if you cannot add one cubit to your height, why do you worry about what you'll eat and what you'll put on? That's his realm of, that's what, that's his realm of operation. Is the realm that that's the minimum, like that's he told us that that's like the minimum, the least. He goes, he said, That's the least. If you can do the least thing, which is add one cubit, can you do you know how to add one cubit to your height? <laughs> None of us knows how to do that, you know. So, God functions at a completely different realm, and when He relates to us, He is condescending to us. He actually is condescending to us. There's so many things about His realm that we cannot fathom. That's why we ask God for understanding and ask God for light so that we can begin to even grasp the things that pertain to his realm. When the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, when Nicodemus came to him and asked about, uh, um, and the Lord began to speak about salvation, you know, and talked about being born again. Nicodemus was uh, like, he couldn't grasp it. And the Lord uh, said, if I, I think he said something like, if I tell you earthly things and you don't understand, how will you understand heavenly things? That means this, co this whole concept of a person being born anew, as hard as it seems for you to understand Nicodemus, this is a, this is a small matter <laughs> compared to the, the, the things that pertain to the realm from which I come, you know. So just we need to keep that in view when it seems like, oh, Lord, you told me this, you told me that, this one, that one, and it did not turn out that way and all that and all that. We need to just remember he's God. He's condescending to us. He can't tell us everything and he has wisdom. He knows why he has allowed things to pan out the way that he has allowed. We just need to rest in his assurances. Nothing can separate us from his love. Nothing can truncate his promises for us and what he has in store for us. We just need to hold on to that. Hold on to the truth about him, that he is faithful. He is true. In him, there's no lie and there's no darkness. He's true. You know, he has proven that over time. You know, so those are the kind of truths we hold on to in this situation. Then we gather. So this second step, I said, gather everything that has happened and put it inside that bucket. That bucket is called the complexities of living a life of faith and walking with one whose ways are too great for our minds to fully comprehend. All right, then the fourth step. So we've said, hold on to your faith in God. We've talked about putting it in the bucket. And then the fourth step is release all that is past and then stay in God's presence. And the reason behind that is that your solution is in him. 
the if there's any the, the way out of the situation that we're you're in or that I, I, I that any of us is is in when we find when, when we encounter a significant setback the only way out of it is in Christ you know a solution that is where is as we stay in him that we'll actually begin to see you know get some light and see how to navigate out of that situation and how to recover from that situation so release all that is past and stay in his presence when i say release all that is past you know that's separate from the previous point i talked about I, what, what i'm saying is that um you know in god nothing dies the things that you've kind of held on to to get to that point, the things we hold on to, even those promises that we have held on to until we get to the point where it's as if everything shatters. At this point, we just need to release everything. Abraham did that when God asked him to sacrifice Isaac. It, it probably didn't make sense to him. I've waited this long for the Lord. And then finally, he has given me this son. I went through the Ishmael situation. I've come out of that. Finally, the Lord has given me this son, and then the Lord says I should sacrifice this son. He had to release that promise to God because God had given him promises saying, not just that he will give him a son, but that through this, you know, he will make him a, a great nation, you know, generations shall come out of him, you know, and, and different promises that the Lord made unto him. His descendants, you know, will be as, as the stars of the heaven, the sand upon the seashore. This is the one son he has <laughs> through whom these things are supposed to happen. And now God says, sacrifice the son. He had to release those promises in order for him to be able to obey what God had said unto him. He had to just let it all go and just, just leave it, release it unto God. And for the disciples too, like we talked about, we talked about them in the previous episode, you know, um, episodes, how they had trusted the Lord, they had left everything and they had put their lives, you know, in this uh, promise of walking with the Messiah and then all of a sudden, everything seemed to end. I believe they had to just, you know, just let it all go. Even though I don't know that they had enough faith to necessarily release it on to God. But they had to just, because the, the, the promise seemed to, there was, seemed to be no road beyond that point. So they had to let it go. So this is, this is a thing that one has to do when you encounter a significant setback. Just release it all onto God. Because nothing dies in God. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. It may look dead in the physical. I'm just picturing, you know, like that uh, uh, um, different scenarios in the, in the Gospels. Like you had the, the, the boy who, the woman whose son, whose only son had died and they were on the way to the funeral. It was dead. But when Jesus came into the scene, he brought life to it, you know. And, you know, other miracles that the Lord did in that, in that light. We, of course, we know of Lazarus as well. He was dead. But Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And that's a, a flicker of hope in a very dark place. That Jesus is the resurrection and the life. In him, things can always come back to life. That's the practical application. Something that seems completely dead can come back to life in him. So, But in order for that to happen, you must release it and let it go. And if his purpose was in it, he will recover it in his way, you know, and in his time. And he will give it the body that he pleases. He will package it in the way he wants. So are there promises? We just let them go. We release them to him. Say, Lord, I'm releasing them to you. If it's your will for me, if this was your will, you will bring it out in the way you want. I'm just going to move on with you. I'm just going to continue to journey with you and build my relationship with you. So let's take a practical example that young people can, you know, relate to. You know, maybe it was in the area of marriage. Um, you thought you heard God about a particular, you know, sister, brother or sister, as the case may be. But that whole pathway just <laughs> ran into what you can call death. And you're trying to catch your breath and trying to understand what exactly just happened. You know, th this in this step you're on the pathway to recovery, I'm encouraging you to let it go and turn to God for succor and comfort. Just release it to him and turn to him for succor and comfort. Turn your attention to him. Ask him for the grace to focus on him, you know, and to focus on your love for him and to focus on worshiping him. You know, as you do that, he actually, as you, as you just release everything and focus on him, 
and just worship him. He will begin to minister to your heart. He will heal your heart, you know. And ultimately, as you focus on him, on his face, not on his hand, he will minister to you in that area that where that whole thing happened and lead you to the fullness of his promises for you, okay? Um, so again, it's not a thing of, you are saying you're releasing it, but you're just thinking, okay, and still expecting that it must be the way you thought it was going to be. No, it's, it's, it's just letting everything go. I'm just, everything go. I just, I'm just saying, Lord, I just want to be with you. Let me just be with you so that you can minister to my heart. And as it pleases you, you will speak to me about what's, you know, what transpired or the promises I, the, that which I held onto in faith. If it pleases you, you will, you will talk to me about that. You know, and I tell you, as time goes on, just as you journey with him, he will begin to bring you light. Maybe not even about the past, but rather about where he's headed with you. You know, you can, uh, where he's headed with you and he will usher you peacefully into his promises for you. Of that, you can be sure. So, but a person may ask, how long will this, will this recovery take? How long do I have to wait? Well, it's only the Lord that can answer that question in reality. No one else can answer that question for you. You know, it depends on a number of things. Um, there's several things. God's wisdom, first and foremost, what, what he's doing, he's on, you know, his knowledge about all the intricacies involved in the situation. Um, it also depends on the issue at hand. You as an individual, you know, how you respond to adverse situations um, in life, uh, where you are on your journey with God, what God is wanting to accomplish through the experience and your responses to him. The, the, the one thing I would advise really is, is, is just to maintain the right response to him. Ask for grace to maintain the right response to him. That is the, that is the aircraft that can take you out of where you're coming from. You know, timing varies. Um, um, it, it, it varies from person to person according to God's wisdom and it varies just from situation uh, to, to situation. You don't, you, again, you, you don't have to, you don't have to be down until, oh, the Lord brings the recovery in the way that you think. But just, just focus on, just work yourself toward uh, um, wholeheartedly worshiping him. The matter at hand, he will certainly resolve. That matter will be resolved. But the one thing you cannot lose is your faith in him, your position in him, your relationship with him, your confidence with him. And like we said earlier, that's exactly what the enemy is trying to take from you. So you want to fight to hold on to that. I will just close this episode by reminding you that as we've read from Romans chapter 8, in all things, you know, we are more than conquerors. I'm more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror as we hold on to the one who vindicates us and helps us. The one who gave his son to die so that we might have life in abundance. May the Lord bless you mightily and fulfill all of his promises and his plans for you. In Jesus' name, amen. <music>